All right. Well, thanks again for uh, joining me today. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Um, so th this film is very unique um, and it tackles that subject matter of um, kind of, you know, of bullying and trolling people, um, but doing it in a non-traditional way over the internet, cyberbullying. Um, how did you come up with the story exactly? Well, actually, Bob came up with the story right at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, I called John, and which is a daily occurrence. We're always on the phone together. <laughs> but um, uh, no, there was this guy, and he didn't want... I'm very careful on the internet. My day yeah. job's um, being a lawyer. So I don't have like wild ideas, and I don't post crazy things online. But he didn't like what I was saying, and it was very, um, very attacking. And it ended up, you know, and I was trying to diffuse it. And it ended up being very, you know, you know, I hope, I hope you die. I hope uh, your friends die. I hope your family dies. And then, you know, he's sending these private messages and everything, but, but he didn't realize I was thinking about it. And it's like, well, I see a picture of your new car. I see your license plate, you know, so I'm a lawyer. I have the ability. I can find out where you live. You know, I can find your house and I just shaved my head um and grew out a goatee so I didn't have any pictures online of what I looked like he would have never recognized me he'd have never seen it coming and you know obviously instead of following through with that that actual action I called John I'm like wait a minute that's a great idea for film and so it kind of that's where it sort of started like what if there was this guy that you could reach out to that did all of those things for you it doesn't have to be just you um what if there was a guy a a troll for hire, an anti-troll, so to speak. And you guys put it together. I mean, it was, uh, yeah. you, how long did it take you to shoot? Was it just a day, like eight hours? Yeah, it was actually, well, there was three weeks of rehearsal with Bob because okay. actually Bob actually plays the troll in the film. So it was three weeks of rehearsals and one day of shooting. So about eight hours of shooting. We did a, a pickup day just for a couple little extra shots, but nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, overall, the main part of the film is an eight hour span shot in real time from the very beginning of him picking them up to him getting all the way to the end. And Bob, <laughs> your, your character, the troll, was just filled with dialogue. How did you how did you master that? Because that's all you were doing was spitting out dialogue. Well, that's not the only thing you were doing, but for the most part, you're spitting out dialogue. Well, we didn't, we had made the decision that if so the way we shot it, not not just not just physically with the cameras and the sound, because mm -hmm. we wanted it to look like it was real, like yeah. something you would find on the dark web. And so, you know, John was like, you know, we'll just do all the cameras all at once. We're not going to move camera to camera. And when we were talking about it, I was like, well, then we don't really, we shouldn't have a script um, because it's going to, the more, I don't, I didn't want it to look rehearsed, even though yeah. I rehearsed, I, they never saw what was coming. So all that dialogue is just basically John having me talk to myself uh, for like three weeks and to... <laughs> Uh, in that space to kind of figure out how to control that space and not to let it, uh, which was important. And John was very specific. You know, this can't be stagnant. It can't be a one shot in a room. It'll be boring. You've got to you've got to do it like a dance. And um, so it was all just on the fly. Yeah, ballet. Yeah, yeah like yeah. ballet. Yeah, you were moving around. So I mean, it made it you know authentic. And so you're so you're telling me that the actors in that room had never heard any of this stuff before. They were just going on their own instinct. They were going all on their own instinct. And what was interesting is even when we did the casting call, um, we didn't send any. It was funny because most of the actors were like, "Well, is there any sides? I need sides." I was like, "There's no sides. I'm gonna give you a few different scenarios." Yeah. and give me anger give me fear um you know give me these different emotions and i gave them scenarios they sent in their tapes and <laughs> then uh narrowed it down had them do a few more things so they never had a script all they had was this is going to be off the cuff real time and we want natural reactions so 
when we narrowed it down from the casting call, it was really stuff. I was giving them, you know, ideas, you know, give me some emotions. And I was like, I need them sent back very quickly because I was trying to see how they could change their emotions very quickly when I was giving them just, and like we said, this is during the pandemic. So there was no live, you know, casting call. It was yeah. send us your tape. Let's see what you got. And where did you film at? Shot it all in Bakersfield, California, which is interesting because that's actually Bob's day daytime job in his basement of his office. Yeah. That's a good way to, you know, use your space though. <laughs> well, yeah. You wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah, we're we're very uh very much about what do we have mm -hmm. instead of what we want to do and what do we need? We're very what do we have? What we're can so we do with what we've got? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, you can see the basement right behind you. I mean, it's a, it was how could we not use that basement? Yeah, I mean, it exactly. was it was intended for that use. <laughs> no, it, it was. I mean, it, it I mean, it's just it's just so funny how things just work out sometimes. Yes, yes. The perfect, perfect space for it. And what I liked about this film was that, I mean, it didn't come across as, you know, a found footage film. You could tell that it was um, almost felt like it was like a live feed that I was watching, you know, like you had said on the dark web. Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah we didn't, I mean, what? it's, it's kind of got that, that Blair Witch found, like you found it sort of, but it's like someone was able to find it off like, oh my gosh, I caught this live thing yeah. that should, that I shouldn't have. You know, um, and a lot of people, um, even our publicist was like, I felt like I shouldn't be watching this. Yeah. Like it was inappropriate for me even to be watching it. It seemed really yeah, like, you're, like you're doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and what's really the one thing that I really enjoyed is that, you know, we're breaking that fourth wall. You know, mm -hmm. he is speaking to you, the audience watching it. So you do feel like you are a part of the show. And I think that is one thing that you know some people have gotten they're like whoa i i don't know how i feel about that because no matter what i couldn't get out of viewing it and i felt like i was in that moment of watching this yeah. and i think it is very when we screened it to uh the cast and some family and friends there was this five minute ten minute just like I don't know what I just watched because they've never seen anything like it. So it is very, uh, it, it's it's something very fresh and new. And I, I like that we were the ones that were able to create that. Yeah, there was a shock factor and it actually yeah. worried me quite a bit. And I mean, John and I have talked about this a lot, but I pulled John aside after everyone was leaving and they're like, oh, good job. And that's all we heard, good job. And I was like, John, did we blow it? Like, is yeah. this terrible? Is this a piece of junk? And he's like, no, he says, let them make, because we were going to have the after party for everybody. Yeah. And it was maybe a 10, 15 minute drive. He goes, see their reaction there. Let them give them a minute to kind of digest and process what, they, what they've seen. And, uh, you know, when we walked through the door, it was like, I got an idea for a sequel. And, and then all this, you know, the enthusiasm was there, but it took a minute for them to even digest it, I think. Yeah. And speaking of, you know, fresh that, you know, fresh and new ideas, that costume for the troll, how, where did you come up with that concept? We actually went to, uh, what is it, the Hollywood uh, costumes, the where they sell uh, Halloween costumes. Okay. Um, so we went and looked at a bunch. We looked online, um, but there was one that we found, um, the Slender Man costume. Yeah. And it just has, if you're familiar with Slender Man, it's just there's no face. So in the costume, it had this thing well, that you're supposed to wear, fans. nylon, yeah, with no face. And what was really interesting is the one, like we went to several different shops. The one we do finally find, we're like, okay, let's try this. Let's see what this is. And then when we opened it, there was no mask in it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But it gave to, us uh, the idea of what we were really going for. Well, we knew he had to have a mask because yeah. he had to keep his identity. So, you know, masks have been 
so done so many different ways. We knew that we wanted something because it was raw. It, it's supposed to be real. You know, what would this guy have? Would he be packing around some complicated big mask? He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He'd want something he could get anywhere. And we wanted to keep it simple. And I think it's pretty, uh, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Yeah, and you kind of get just not only the mask, you kind of just get the full, you can see in the picture, the full suit. Yeah, yeah. When you get the blood splattered on him, you know. So you got to be able to throw that away pretty easily. Yeah, and yeah. Like get some stuff on it too. <laughs> well, what was really interesting is one of the scenes when we finally did uh, get some blood splatter on it, it was like, yes, it looks great on here. So it it's... It worked for all intense purposes. Yeah. <laughs> just, just don't get rid of it. Because you never no. don't get rid of it. Oh, I think yeah. we need to trademark it and sell it for Halloween. Yeah. 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 It's something that is. Uh, and I, I like to think by the end of the movie, you're really kind of rooting for him, for the bad guy. Like at first you're like, oh, my gosh, why would anybody do this? By the end, you're like, oh, I totally get it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've had that one screening with the uh, family and friends. We had people cheering for certain people to get it. So, to, you know, so that was my next question. Yeah. How did I mean, was there a certain individual that people root for more to get it or? Was there yes, there was. Okay. I don't know if we should tell you which one because you'll figure it out pretty quickly because it, <laughs> it, it's pretty consistent with everybody. The yeah. Most, yeah. Um, despised. Yeah, but there is definitely one person that does stand out that everybody was like why 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 didn't you do this and then everybody had an idea for how we should film the scenario with this character so it was what uh, they deserved yeah everybody and, and believe me some of them are very creative <laughs> yeah <laughs> and do you have any funny stories that happened on on set during the i know filming was short but there had to have been some of those oh, kind the of lunchtime thing john uh, well, I wasn't there because I was dropping footage at lunch. So, so take it away. I met everybody, but they didn't know who was going to play the troll. So I barely spoke to them. John and I talked about this quite a bit. I didn't want to bond with them. I didn't want them to recognize me as the troll, whatever. We wanted it as when, when you see in the movie them having their blindfolds taken off, that's the first time they see the character. It's the first time they see the mask. And they don't and know what you so at all. Those reactions are very genuine. Okay. And they're so genuine, in fact, that at lunch, um, you know, obviously now they're untied. Everybody feels good about what we're doing. We're good. And one of them jokes and says, um, you know, I know it's it's silly and ridiculous, but I, I dropped a pin on my phone and sent it to my like a, like three or four people in my friends and family <laughs> because there's no script. There's two dudes in a basement in a town I've never been in. Mm -hmm. Like I was freaked out. And the other three all said this. Oh, I did the same thing. I did all four of those people that are in the film all sent their location and pins so in case they never made it home. So those a lot of those reactions, especially in the beginning of the film, are pretty dang genuine. Yeah, even when we were doing makeup, um, we had our makeup artist, her name is Ashley. And we were like, look, you're going to have to do all the masks. You're going to have to tie everybody up. We don't feel comfortable tying anybody up. We don't feel comfortable putting masks on people's faces, mouths. Like, it's already going to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just let you do it. And, you know, we'll just give direction on if you're doing it right or what's going on. So <laughs> we were trying to be very careful. Um, because I don't know. I mean, if I was an actor, I probably would have done the exact same thing. Like, uh, this does not feel comfortable. Sure. I just <laughs> drove myself to my own death. <laughs> no, for sure. Um, and those camera angles were, I mean, they were on point. How did you accomplish that? Um, well, we were definitely still trying to make it like a live show. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't want to have the cameras moving around. I mean, obviously there is the POV, um, but we didn't want traditional filming of, you know, an over the shoulder, you know, a two shot, uh, things like that. We wanted to make sure that it felt like you were watching a live stream of some show. 
So we wanted the cameras placed, never moved. And that was why we did have uh, the POV to kind of give you one extra different look. And do you have a, a release date yet for the film or is it still going through the festival circuit? We're finishing up the festivals right now and we're doing, <clears throat> I, you know, I'm going to tell him that it's kind of a weird thing. We shot it and because it was so, those cameras only run for what, 15, 20 minutes a piece, John? Yeah. So it's running for 15, 20 minutes a piece. And then your sound is running on a different time schedule. Like we thought there was no way we pulled it off. Like, and it sat, I mean, we shot it and what, how long did it sit, John? Like four months? That for about four months. Before we even touched it, because we thought, ah, you know, this was something we did and it's a great idea, but we did, you know, it was me, John and, and, and a makeup artist, yeah. you know, there wasn't a crew making sure everything was done right. And, you know, there well, was technically you were just, you were on set. So it was literally just me and Ash. That's true. Doing all the other production side of it. So yeah, yeah it we, was, uh, we had very little um, belief that it, we pulled it off. And then he started, I remember I was like, oh, you know, just watch it, you know, see what it looks like. So he's watching and he calls you, hey, this looks cool. There's some cool stuff in here. And then I get a call a couple hours and he goes, hey, there's some really cool. And like, it like, then we started to get excited and like, oh my gosh, did, did we actually put the, you know, we thought we'd have to cut it down and it would end up being, you know, we'd be lucky if we got, got a 20 minute short out of it. Um, but it, I don't know, sometimes the universe pays off. Yeah, yeah. It definitely did. Yeah. And, um, so what's next for you guys? I mean, I, I know, I'm sure you guys, I know you guys are going through this festival stuff now, but are you guys working on anything else? Do you have any plans? Yeah, yeah we're working on uh, another project called A Gun's Life. Um, mm -hmm. But just separately, going back to Trolled, some of the reviews that we have gotten on this film, um, I mean, have been incredible. I mean, the stuff that we were like, oh, wow. Like, we didn't think we'd be compared to these films. Um, just... We'll definitely have to send you some of those articles. They've been amazing. Um, just how they compare us to uh, a lot of these noir type, crazy, yeah. out of the box films. It's it's been it's been interesting. Yeah, I'd love to read them because I know I got a little bit of like you said the Blair Witch Project, um, you know, and then Saw is another thing that came to mind. You know, that yeah. comes up a lot. Yeah, a little bit but of I everything. Mean, some of them have been um, nice enough that. John and I have had some tear, little teary moments on the phone when when we get them. Um, yeah. To to have like a little tiny film like that because we didn't spend a lot of money on it. Um, yeah. So you know the idea that you can create something that people appreciate and it's not about money is uh, it, it's a lot of things. I mean, it's encouraging. It's it's awesome, but it's it's really you know as a filmmaker, it really shows that it has it has very little to do. You don't need a production budget in order to tell a good story. And um, that's something that John and I have really tried to do. Because um, most of our films are, I mean, they're considered ultra low uh, at this point. So, but it's nice to know that a good story, people will appreciate it no matter, no matter what you spend on it. So that's good to know. Yeah, I can't wait to, you know, read the reviews. You know, it, it was, uh, you know, for me, it was not, it was refreshing because it was a, it was a brand new take. Like I hadn't seen anything like this before. You know, it wasn't like I said, that found footage feel. It was the, I'm watching it live and I shouldn't be watching this, but I'm watching it anyways. You know, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. And that, that, my next question is, and I forgot earlier as um, the ending, was that the original ending you had intended or was there something different in mind? That was the original ending I think we intended. Um, but we still have some thoughts. Uh, and there's been some interesting things thrown out that we could that we could do that um, we're still bouncing around, I think. It does it to some of the conversations we've had, the way it does end, it definitely does leave room for us another film, um, which it's kind of what we did want to leave that open, that door open, because when you start from the beginning, it does say, you know, this is episode three or four. So you kind of feel like you're you're coming in on the middle of 
the seasoned, you know, uh, show that's on the dark web. So I, I, I like the way we did end it um, because it definitely has given us some ideas like, okay, well, we can try this, we can do this. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's open. Well, I can't wait because there's so much you could do with this, you know, like, like a, the old choose your own adventure books, you know, growing up, you can almost do something like that, you know. <laughs> um, That's part of the inspiration, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. We, we had talked about a concept years before about doing a choose your own adventure and how difficult that would be. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously, um, Black Mirror pulled that off with Bandersnatch and they did a, a very good job with it. And uh, I was mad for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so it, yeah it, this is a very and there's an element to this that hasn't we, we don't generally talk about but there's another element to trolled that is going to be something um there's even more to it that i don't even know how to say it without saying it like there's more to, there's there's another level to troll that that has not been released yet okay so there's yeah. even more there's a more interesting version of it so and almost seeing a kind of flash because each one of those students uh, or uh, seeing a flashback to who they were bullying and kind of that story would even make, you know, for a good watch also. Yeah. Kind of all that in. Yeah, definitely. There's this, it, it was definitely fun uh, putting it together. Because uh, like I said, you know, like Bob says, it was, you know, we were, we sat on it for a minute and when we finally did start putting it together, it was like, oh, this might be really good. Let's let's see. The one thing that we did get a good compliment on is people love the chat room, which gave it that real authenticity of watching a live show. Yeah. So that was really, that was fun because we invited a group of friends and we we're like, hey, come over, watch the movie. And we want you to write down your ideas for this chat room. So they had a great time even adding stuff to the chat room and it's funny because some people were watching it during the screening and they were like oh my god did you read that part that was hilarious who was that so that was that was <laughs> fun as well yeah because it's all authentic you know you read those comments and i'm like that's what people would be saying yeah totally. exactly yeah yeah i mean and it's it's real because like if you watch youtube there's live youtube videos there's live comments i mean this is yeah. all this is all you know it's all great stuff and sometimes they're outrageous. Like you read some stuff, you're like, what is going through this person's mind? And we definitely wanted to keep with that type of feel, you know, that live, that live chat room. Sorry, I don't know if that's, you can hear that. There's like four diesels running by my window. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were definitely trying to give the audience, we kept trying to figure out how to, keep raising that bar of making it feel live. Yeah. yeah, and we knew that if if we just sat down and wrote all the chat room stuff out, it wouldn't be nearly as good as we got other people that hadn't seen it. And a lot of people that were doing the chat room had never seen the cut of the film before. So I thought that was, a, and it was a lot of fun. It was a great day. We had a good time with it. You know, and also your props in the film, you, had, you know, you had the file folders with everybody's names on them and there a bunch of information in there. I mean, just thinking of someone having a file on me, it would be kind of unnerving. So, I mean, I, I, it really added to the realism of the whole film. So that was great. Oh, we've never, I don't think we've ever talked about when we had to go pick up all the stuff. Oh. <laughs> so John and I had to go buy all the implements and not just the file folders, but all the torture implements. So, you know, you've got the machetes <laughs> and all the other stuff. Yeah. And, but Zip we went guys. and bought them all at the same time. And it was like a cart full sit ties and all the other things that we were going to need. And I remember we, we were in some main, main store, some Target or whatever. And I was, I look at John and I'm like, how many questions are going to be asked when we go up to check out? And we have just a cart full of that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And we were just cracking up the whole time. It was a good time. Yeah. I'm sure we were on somebody's radar that day. I'm sure. <laughs> That is funny. Well, it sounds like you guys certainly did lay the foundation for something really cool. Um, so, I mean, well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you liked it because I, I know you get to see a lot of very cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Like this was a, like I said, a new fresh take. So, 
this. That's really good. Cool. That's good. That's what we were trying to do. Yeah. So it's it's great for people like you that that watch a ton of these things um, that really just got it. So thank you. We appreciate that. Very much. Yeah. Um, as soon as I heard the name like trolled, I'm like, I don't know. I gotta see this film. I got I gotta see what this is about. So I mean, it, it's it's uh, I think it's it fits the time of what we're going through right now as a culture society. You know, I just uh, you know what. I, th I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people because a lot of people get bullied and cyber bullying is just nuts. Like I, it's worse than I'd rather get punched in the face and get it over with than have to deal with some of this other crap that people have to go through. Constantly. Well, we, we started, we went into the whole NFT space with this. And when we were uh, going to some of the NFT conventions, we were legitimately hit up by several different people that thought, he is real and we're like how can we get him and uh like we're telling us horrible stories i mean it was really bad like some stuff we're like golly and it, it was it was good to hear that people felt like they could talk to us in confidence and mm -hmm. tell us their stories um and that was a very interesting part to like really hear people like, hey, this this is real. I've been bullied, and this is horrible. And there's some horrible, horrible stories. People that have been really uh, well. There was a distributor that gave us a bunch of. Oh, I'm not going to say who it was, but he'd given us a bunch of really great notes. But he talked about his daughter who had made a um, music video, a music video, and somebody had put, um, you know, whoever the production designer had put a bunch of those things. If anybody remembers the whole PizzaGate thing those symbols that all those people were freaking out online about and she ended up like six eight months this is a 20 something year old girl and she's got six or eight months of death threats that won't stop that were a daily harassment and um he said he really got to the point where he was afraid he was going to lose his daughter to suicide because of the online bullying and like, you know, you start to hit, like, we made this movie and it was this crazy thought that I had and John and I explored it and we knew it was an issue, but there's a level of seriousness to online bullying that I really hope um, this brings some, some light to that we've got to see like how scary it really, really is. It's really terrifying. People lose their lives over it, really lose their lives over it, not just make movies about it. Yeah. yeah. So for uh yeah no it is it is something you know it's really yeah it's predominant in our society I mean, I, I work in public education and it's it is it's there and it's just it's sad it's sickening it's scary you know it's just well not to end on it let's not end on a negative note let's not do that but uh, well, you asked about what we're doing next we're working on yeah uh, we're going to get we're working on a, a gun's life and uh, that's that's getting very close to getting shot and that's going to be a very interesting and it's a it's another it's another one of those very unique versions and takes on um, a story and it's about a gun that travels through an la neighborhood and the impact okay. it's on everyone so yeah oh, we're, that's very really proud of it and i've seen what john can do and the other stuff and i know what he's going to do with this so i have like a little mental preview and i am uh I will tell you, I'm super excited, not just for me. I'm excited for everybody because it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Are you You're trying to make me blush before we get is, off. Is it working? <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Oh, no, it does sound really interesting. Okay. Yeah. Keep a lookout for that one for sure. Well, All thank right, you guys. so much, man. We really appreciate no it, especially you. since, you know, we had to thank you. take two shots at it. Hey, you got, we got this cool background for you now, though. So it's Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you two have a good day. All right. Thank you. All right, thank All you. Right.